crafters, I hope you're having an awesome Tuesday. Welcome to this week's tutorial. It's Amanda here at Crafters Autonomous and today I've got a crochet project where we take a normal pair of flip flops and turn them into these fun sandals. A quick word before we jump into the actual tutorial is I did have some technical difficulties filming this video, so there are a couple spots where it gets a little blurry. However, don't let that stop you from watching the video. I very clearly walk through and talk through all the steps. Also in the description below, you can find a written pattern for the steps for crocheting the heel of our project. So between the explanations that I give as I'm working on the project and the description with the pattern, you should be able to piece it together even though a couple spots the focus goes a little bit wonky so let's jump into this project so let's start off by getting our materials I've got obviously a pair of flip-flops these were a pair that I found at Publix they were on sale at the end of the season and they're really nice because they've got this plasticky firm sole but of course you can just get you know the Walmart kind or a pair from the dollar store that would work totally fine as well next we need our yarn I am using some cotton yarn and in particular I'm using I love this cotton yarn from Hobby Lobby, which as a side note, I really like. This was one of my first times using it, and I really like this yarn. I was very happy with it. We will need scissors, obviously for our tail ends of yarn, but also to get this out of here, you will need a needle and thread, because if you look here, we're first going to sew around the shoe to create something that we can crochet in. And then of course you need our crochet hook, which I will be using a US size E 3.5 millimeter hook. The first steps are prepping the shoe. For me, that involves cutting this out. You will need to cut out your flip-flop straps. If you have the plastic kind, of course, you can just cut them and pop the little round part off in the bottom. But I'm gonna clean this up and then come back. Once your flip-flop is prepped, it is time for my least favorite part of this whole process, which is the sewing part. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're gonna sew loops with the thread all the way along and then we will be able to crochet into that. So to do that, I've got a small needle and you don't wanna go with too big of a needle because or else it'll punch your holes really big and it'll wear the flip-flop down more. And I've just got some thread and a coordinating color. You can either go for a color that matches your flip-flop base or one that matches your yarn, doesn't really matter. I'm going to thread my needle and I'd like to double it up so that we're running two threads through at a time just for extra strength. So I'm just gonna pull a big long section of thread, not too long else it'll get tangled and get it Harder, but long enough so you can get a good way around the shoe. Cut my thread and then tie my ends together. I'll do a couple knots here, just basic overhand knots. So I just tied a knot and now I have a big loop of thread with a needle at the end. So I wanted to start just arbitrarily along the side by the heel here. And for me, my flip flops are nice because they have these holes and I'm going to use those as a guide of how far apart to space my stitching. If you don't have something like that on your shoe, you can go ahead and use a ruler to mark even spacing around. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in just a little ways away from the edge and you to leave enough of the sole on the side so that way I don't just tear through the side, but I'm gonna come through kind of at an angle and I want my needle to come out part way down the side of my shoe. See the needle coming through right there? I'm going to push it all the way through. You may want a symbol for this project. Going to pull it all the way through the end and then I'm going to run my needle through the loop of yarn just to secure it in place. And this first one, I'm going to cinch it up a little bit. For the rest of our stitching though, we don't want to cinch it up or else it'll be too tight for us to get our crochet hook underneath. So I'm just kind of going along one stitch every row of these dots. I'll go to my next spot, come in and come out down the side. This is what I'm saying, when I pull this through, I don't wanna cinch it down like that. I want to leave it loose, about like that. And if you leave it loose, it will make your life so much easier when you come through and crochet. On my first shoe, I didn't leave it loose enough and so it was a lot harder to come under with the crochet hook. So leave your, lo your loops loose so that way it's easier to crochet. And essentially just going to keep doing this, come from the top and out the side, keep almost like a whip stitch where it just kind of spirals like that and just keep stitching along the edge so I have these loops that I can crochet my shoe on. I'm gonna work all the way around the shoe and then I will show you how to actually crochet this project. So for reference, here's what I'm talking about. I'm keeping these loops loose. It might look a little messy, but it will all even out once we start crocheting around. Now I've only gone a little ways around the shoe. I've got a long ways to go, but you will get there and then we'll get to the fun crocheting part. 
So now I have stitched all the way around my shoe. As you can see, we left it fairly loose, so we will easily be able to get our crochet hook under there. So let's get our E crochet hook and our yarn. And the first step is we're going to just slip stitch along to create a border. So I like to start by making a slip knot and putting it on my hook. And then I'm gonna come to the side and I like to start just kind of in this inner arch side because I feel like you don't notice it as much when it's all said and done. Also my tail ends of thread, I just wove those underneath the stitching and that'll all get hidden as we crochet around. So what I need to do is I'm gonna pick two stitches to start and I'm going to insert my hook under both stitches. And then I'm going to yarn over and work a slip knot. Now I recommend working this somewhat loosely as you go around, but you do want to stick with a small hook size so you can easily get under the stitching. Then I will go to my next two stitches, come under both of them with my hook, yarn over, and work a slip knot. And I will keep working this around, going under the next two stitches, working a slip knot until I get all the way back to where I started, and then I will do a slip stitch to join. You do want to make sure with your tension though that you leave it loose enough so that way they're not all bunched up. We pull the slip stitch through, I like to kind of stretch it out a little bit so we can get our hook all the way over to the next stitch. So here you can start to get a feel for what we're doing all the way around our flip-flop edge. So at this point I have slip stitched nearly all the way around. If we look right here, I just have three more thread stitchings. Now I have been working in two, but that's okay. I will just work in one for this next stitch and then work in two for my last one. Last thing I'm going to do is just slip stitch in my very first slip stitch to join the round. And then once I've slip stitched them together, I will fasten off. Of course, we will eventually need to weave in those ends, but we'll worry about that later on. So now that we have crocheted all the way around our shoe, the next thing is going to be to add the heel. Now just a couple quick notes on this. I'm about a size seven and a half. This flip flop says it's a size nine. And you may wear a completely different size shoe. That's okay, I'm gonna walk you through what I do to make it fit me, and I'll kind of tell you how you can adjust it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find roughly the middle stitch on the heel. And I'm going to put a stitch counter in it just to make this next part a little easier. Then I'm gonna count 13 stitches to the side. So this is the part where you will adjust it. If your foot is a little smaller, you may wanna do say just 11 stitches to the side. If your foot is a little larger, you may wanna go up to 15 stitches. And you may need to do the first couple of rows a few times to kind of get a feel for what it will look like so you can decide what fit you want. But I'm going to count 13 away from this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And you wanna make sure it's roughly even with your other shoe so that they stay balanced, that looks pretty even. Also, if you make adjustments on my basis pattern here, you may wanna write those down so you do the same thing when you make the second shoe. But regardless, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook, come to that stitch that's 13 away from the back middle, and we're going to insert in just the back loop, just that top loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and work our first single crochet stitch. Now I'm gonna work a single crochet in the next 12 stitches as well, working in just that back loop. Once I've worked 13 single crochet, I'm going to work a single crochet increase in this middle stitch that I marked from the beginning. So again, in the back loop, that basically just means I'm going to work two single crochet stitches in this same spot. And then the rest of this row is going to mirror what we've done so far, and we're going to crochet, single crochet 13 stitches. So that is the first row for my heel. For my second row, I'm going to chain one, and then turn my work, and I'm gonna work one single crochet in each of the next 13 stitches. And this time I'm gonna work through both loops of my previous row. 
Then in the next two stitches, I'm going to work a single crochet increase. So two single crochet in this next stitch. And two single crochet in the following stitch. And then to finish the row, I will work 13 single crochet until I reach the end of the row. For rows three, four, five, and six, I'm just going to single crochet evenly along. And there will be a total of 30 single crochet. So let me complete the next four rows and then I'll show you what we do for row seven. So now that I've worked rows three through six where I just worked single crochet evenly for a total of 30 single crochet, we're gonna move on to row seven. I'm going to start by chaining one and turning my work like we do at the beginning of every row. So I'm going to work a single crochet in my first stitch. And then I'm going to work a single crochet decrease. I do this by inserting my hook, pulling up a loop, inserting my hook in the next stitch, pulling up a loop, yarning over, and pulling through all three loops. Then I'm going to work just one single crochet in the next nine spaces. Then I'm going to work a single crochet increase in my next space. So one, and then two. And then I'm going to work one single crochet in my next four stitches. An increase. Nine single crochet. A single crochet decrease. and a single crochet in the last stitch. Chain one, turn your work, and now we will begin row eight. So again, all these rows kind of mirror themselves. So this one we start with a single crochet, then we do a decrease, work all the way around, and then do a decrease and single crochet at the very end of the row. So in our first stitch, we work a single crochet, then a single crochet decrease, and then 24 single crochet. Now I just have three stitches left in the row, so I'm going to work a decrease, and a single crochet in my very last stitch. Row nine is going to be really similar. Obviously we start by chaining one and then turning. We're gonna start with a single crochet, and then a decrease. and then 22 single crochet until we're left with just three stitches in our row. And then a decrease. And then a single crochet in our last stitch. So row 10, I will start by chaining one and turning my work, and then a single crochet in our first stitch, then a decrease. And then I will work five single crochet. And then a decrease. Six single crochet. Decrease. Five single crochet. Decrease. And a single crochet in our last stitch. Row 11, I'm just going to single crochet across evenly and I'll have 22 single crochet. So now we are on row 12. Of course, start with a chain one and turn. We're gonna start with five single crochet. A decrease. single crochet, a decrease, and then five single crochet to the end of the row. So rows 13 through 15 are going to follow a similar pattern. We will start by chaining one and working a single crochet in our first stitch, then a decrease, 
and then we will single crochet until there's just three stitches left and in those last three stitches we will work a decrease and then a single crochet. So we're going to do this for rows 13, 14, 15 and then fasten off. So now I've worked the heel. The last thing I need to do is I'm going to do a single crochet border just to kind of round out the edges of everything. I'm gonna put a slip knot on my hook, come down here to the very beginning, and I'll go through, and I'll go through the stitch along the side and slip stitch it in place right here. And then just along the sides of my rows, I'm going to work single crochet stitches. So I'm just gonna kind of go in along the side, try to space them as evenly as you can, and just work single crochet stitches. Try to keep track of how many you do on your first shoe, so that way you can do the same number on your next shoe. But I don't really count as I go along, I just kind of single crochet along. If they're looking kind of bunchy, like I've got too many, I'll space them out a little further. Usually I basically just kind of go in between every row. First I'll put a stitch in every one of these stitches along the top here, just work a single crochet. And then I'll work right back down the next side. And then I will slip stitch it to the next stitch along the edge of our shoe, along that base there. and then fasten off. So that is the heel of our shoe. What we have left to do is add this part and add the ties here. However, I'm playing a very intense game of yarn chicken, so I may end up doing my ties in a different color. So let's move up to this part here. So as you may notice, I left this very flat because I have very flat feet. Very low profile feet is what I believe the term is. And of course, this cotton, the yarn has some stretch to it. So if you wanna keep it securely on your foot, you want to do it fairly snug. So how many rows you do is going to depend on how large your feet are. But I decided to make my strap 10 single crochet wide. So I'm gonna to come to this outer side of my shoe. So if I were working on the right foot, I'd come to this side. Since I'm working on the left foot, I'm coming to this side. And I'm going to figure out where I want those 10 stitches to be. Since I've already completed one shoe, I'm going to base it off of that and I will put stitch markers where I decide to work. So I'm kind of lining it up by the colors here. So for me, I'm gonna work along from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's how thick my strap will be. You, of course, can make yours wider or narrower, just depending on how you want it to look. Now I'm essentially going to work a bunch of rows of just 10 single crochet back and forth. So I'm going to put a slip knot on my hook, working in just the back loops again. I'm going to insert my hook, my first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two to create my first single crochet. And you can also work over your tails. So I'm gonna work 10 single crochet until I get to there, and then just keep working several rows. So I have matched this shoe to that shoe. For me, the way I sized it was I essentially stuck my foot under there. I'll use my hand for illustration. Pulled this side down, kind of stretched it a little bit, and thought about how snug and tight that I wanted. And I wanted it fairly snug because like I said, I have fairly low profile feet. I decided to do 22 rows of just working 10 single crochet back and forth. Now we do have one last little row to do because if we look at the edge of our shoe here, on the inside, we have this extra little triangle piece, if you will, that doesn't lie flat. So we could either attach it and then have it be warpy, or we could just crochet in that shape. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to do six slip stitches and four single crochet stitches. Now, depending on which shoe you're doing depends on whether you do the single crochet or the slip stitches first, because it just depends on which way you're facing you're going on your shoe. On this one, we are going to be working up that way, so we wanna do our slip stitches here and our single crochet up there. I'm just gonna have my work facing me. So in my very last stitch there, I'm going to work a slip stitch. That comes as my first slip stitch. A slip stitch in the next spot for our second one. A third slip stitch. Fourth slip stitch. Fifth slip stitch and sixth slip stitch. And then in the last four spaces, I'm going to work a single crochet. 
So one, two, three, and four. And now all that's left to do is to attach it on this side. Before I attach it, I like to figure out where I'm going to attach my stitches and I'll kind of compare it to my other shoe. Again, we're gonna have 10 stitches to connect to. So I like to figure out where those 10 would be and mark it just so I can know where exactly I'm working. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And I'm going to slip stitch these together. The way I'm going to do so, I'm gonna turn it so my work is like this. I'm going to come through the back loop, that 10th tenth, tenth stitch there, come through the top of my stitch there, and yarn over and pull through everything to work that slip stitch. Insert through the next stitch along the sole, insert through the next stitch on the sandal strap, and slip stitch. Next stitch in the sole, next stitch on our strap, work a slip stitch. I'm gonna do this along all 10 stitches of my sandal strap. And I promise the yarn doesn't actually split this much, it's just because I'm at an awkward angle crocheting this to get this on the camera. So that's why it looks like this yarn's hard to work with or like, I don't know what I'm doing. But I promise I don't normally crochet like this. And my last spot here, slip stitch it together. And then I like to also slip stitch it to the neck, to do a slip stitch through the next stitch along the sole just to kind of hold it down really securely. And then I'll pull one last big loop through and fasten off. So the last thing we need to do to complete our sandals is obviously we'll need to deal with weaving in the ends, but we also need to make our tie strap. Now, this is all the yarn I have left like this, so I'm going to take these ones off and use this other red color to make my straps. This is also, I love this cotton yarn by Hobby Lobby. And quite honestly, you can do the straps however you want. You could do a braid and attach it. You could get a piece of ribbon instead of yarn. Really however you want to do this. I personally like to do my straps with some floating single crochet. So that's what these ones over here are. They're just floating single crochet stitches. Excuse me, not, not floating single crochet, foundation single crochet stitches. If you're not familiar with that, I will show you how to do that on this shoe. So I'm going to show you how I do it on this side here, but the same process will be done on the other side as well, and of course I'll need to fix this shoe as well. We're going to start right here. If you're doing the foundation single crochet tie straps, you want to start with whatever yarn you're using and make a slip knot, and we are going to put our hook through the top corner stitch. So whatever is the corner stitch, of your sandal, put your hook through there, and then we'll put the slip knot on our hook, size it down, and we'll pull that loop through. Now this first one's gonna be a little weird, and then the rest will get into more of the foundation crochet. But what we're gonna do is in the stitch below, insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, which are essentially the same steps as the foundation crochet. But now I'll show you how we do it when we're working in a previous stitch. We're gonna come to the bottom of our previous stitch. If you look at the underside, there's like this V there. We're gonna go through the bottom of the stitch with our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop just through one. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. I will show you that again. In the bottom of the stitch we just completed, insert our hook under those two pieces right there, yarn over and pull a loop through that stitch, yarn over, pull the loop through one, yarn over, pull the loop through two. 
And I have a whole video that explains this process with double crochet stitches. I will link it up there in the card. But the same process applies to the single crochet, but you can watch that video if you want to get a better feel on how to do foundation stitches. I'm going to make these as long as I want, so that I have enough to tie it around my ankle. I'm going to do my tie on this side as well, and of course on the other shoe. Weave in all my ends, and then our shoes will be done. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, let me know and let others know by leaving a big thumbs up. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button down below somewhere and also hit the little bell icon so you get notified when I post new content. I've got a lot of awesome fall and Halloween and crochet projects coming up, so you definitely don't want to miss those. I will say that I wore these shoes out and they worked very well and they were pretty comfortable, not gonna lie. So go ahead and make your own custom crochet sandals. Thanks so much for watching and happy crafting.